I've done a whole lot of this in my time. Every time there was a new Halo, I was there at the midnight launch when that was still a thing. Sheldon, think this through. You're going to ask Howard to choose between sex and Halo. No, I'm going to ask him to choose between sex and Halo 3. It was kind of my real first exposure to space aliens. Please enjoy my bright blue balls! Now, I know what you're thinking. Kill me or release me, Parasite. But do not waste my time with talk. So we're gonna watch some clips and react. For ages we searched for one who might unlock the secrets of the rings. An oracle. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. We'll talk more about Squarespace later in the video. So I filmed this video about a month ago and I'm just editing now. And I've realized I haven't filmed enough stuff. I'm currently in my office at Swinburne University so I don't have my suit on me. Super hyped for the TV show which comes out like tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get this video up overnight. Um, so I'm piecing this together right at the last minute and I wanted to go bigger than usual. I wanted to do some math. We don't always do math, but we do sometimes. And so let's do some calculations for things within Halo and see how realistic some of the stuff within the game is. Relax. So one thing I always found interesting within the Halo games are these things called light bridges. They're literally bridges made out of light. So I figured we can do a calculation to see if this is actually possible. If you could create a bridge made out of pure light. Such a good I need a weapon. Right. Let's calculate. The calculations are in and here we've got some equations, I've plugged in the numbers, I've shown you, so if you guys want to follow along, feel free, we're not going to talk through it, because there's probably a lot of people that don't want to hear that, but down here I've calculated, I've got three results, so for a human to walk across a bridge made of light, you would need this much power, this much watts of light, uh, just for the human to walk across, so that's a lot, let me put it in pers into perspective for you, so that's a, that would cost per minute, about 660,000 US dollars for one minute. So for the second result, the chief, who was significantly bigger, he's like seven foot tall, 180 kilograms I found, and that's how much power it would take for him, which works out to be about 1 million US dollars for one minute, just so the chief can walk along that bridge. And then for the last one, we calculated the same thing for a scorpion, for a tank in the game. And that would cost you about 500 million US dollars to operate it for one minute. This is assuming all the light would be used to support the object. Uh, practically, it would cost a lot more. There's also one other slight problem with our light bridge. Uh, it would vaporize anything that tried to cross it. So, not very realistic. I was trying to decide what would be interesting to calculate in terms of this halo ring and not too hard. <laughs> so I come up with this idea. I could try and calculate how big like a crack would need to be in sort of the foundation in the actual halo ring itself before the whole thing just sort of critically failed and just went kaput and uh, all completely broke. Important point, I assumed the halo rings are constructed out of a steel alloy. Okay, so that's interesting because that means the crack in the halo ring only needs to be 0.05% of the entire structure for it to reach a critical failure and the thing will just tear itself apart. I just flicked that into my face, but that's not much at all. So these things, even the, the tiniest bit of damage on the outside or tension, this thing is just going to rip itself apart, which explains why in the first halo, a single nuclear explosion was able to just destroy the ring. So halo rings built out of steel and not very practical, but maybe there's some unknown material out there that we could use, so. They let me pick, choose whichever Spartan I wanted. Watched as you so became the soldier, soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you are strong. Two kilometers, easy. Stay sharp. 
His armor's locked up. Gel layer could have taken most of the impact. We're not leaving him here. Yeah, you're not. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. Feet, wait! The Arbiter's with us! Okay, so Chief just fell from space and walked it off. So let's calculate how fast he must have been moving when he hit that surface. It should be a pretty easy calculation. Were it so easy? Calculations are done, and Chief was moving at 69.6 meters per second when he hit the ground. That's about 150 miles per hour, which isn't that quick. So I think he could actually survive this, given his, you know, super suit. You know, in MotoGP, riders come off sometimes uh, at like 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, so 200, what, 150 miles per hour is like 250 kilometers per hour. So you know, I think this is actually possibly survivable, but I mean, you know, it is a direct impact. In MotoGP, they just kind of slide. So I'm just going to give, you know, the, the super suit the benefit of the doubt and say it's survivable. They're going to try to take our Mac guns offline, give their capital ships a straight shot at Earth. Mac Lucky last few calculations. I'm going to try and calculate how powerful these magnetic accelerator cannons are, MAC cannons, because they're quite similar to the real life analogs, uh, gas rifles or gas cannons. So this could be tough, but I think we can do it. So let's jump into it. Calculations are done, and the little handhold one that is equivalent each time you fire it to about four Hiroshima bombs, so it's a good substitute for a nuclear bomb. Um, so, you know, if you're playing a game and you shot that at a craft just over there, I think everyone, including yourself, is gonna be instantly killed. And then the bigger version of that gun is absolutely ridiculous, and it would be equivalent of a magnitude 10 uh, earthquake on the Richter scale, and that would involve the uh, surface rupturing completely along the major fault line. So you're talking planetary destruction. So not very tactical, but definitely devastating. I wanted to talk about the gravity hammer because it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's called the gravity hammer, but it sends people flying. <laughs> You know, if it's gravity, it should probably have the opposite effect, right? Uh, so maybe a better name for it would be the dark energy hammer. Because, you know, we don't really know what dark energy is, but it, can, it seems to be like a kind of anti-gravity. Cortana, what exactly am I looking at? That is another halo. I thought halo was some sort of super weapon. It is. If activated, this ring will cause destruction on a galactic scale. The device would destroy the infection and its food supply. Halo. Now, is this realistic? Could supernovas do this to a galaxy? We think the kill zone of supernovas is about 25 to 50 light years. So that's like how close a supernova would need to be to wipe out all life on the Earth. Yeah, so that's kind of concerning because, you know, there's a supernova in our galaxy at least once every 50 years. Um, but it doesn't look like any of the local stars are going to go supernova, so don't worry about that. Uh, so you would need about, what, 2,000 of these supernovas all at the same time to go off, and you could, you know, kind of wipe out all life in the galaxy. And then there's hypernova which are pretty terrifying. These things are much rarer. So for a star to go supernova, it has to have about eight times the mass of our sun. So our sun won't go supernova when it dies. It won't be good, but it won't go supernova. So these hypernova, you need a star with about 30 times the mass of the sun. And these things really explode. But these things might have a kill zone of like 10 to 25,000 light years. So you're talking about, you'd only need a few of these hypernova possibly 
to, you know, possibly wipe out most of the life in the galaxy. One of the mass extinction events on Earth, the Ordovician mass extinction event, wiped out a large amount of biodiversity on Earth, we think was from an excess of gamma rays. And so this is predicted to have come from possibly a hypernova about 6,000 light years away. So when these gamma rays arrived at Earth, you know, which would have taken, if it was from a hypernova 6,000 light years away, 6,000 years, we think it only took about 30 seconds for those gamma rays to destroy 50% of the ozone layer. And it would have also ionized a lot of the nitrogen and oxygen, which would have resulted in this smog stuff, which is really bad for life. And we think about 85% of biodiversity on Earth was wiped out from this single event. So not 100%, but it was bad. If you haven't already, why not start a Squarespace website? It's never been easier. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that'll allow you to create a beautiful online presence and run your business. Via our partnership, we offer a year-long comp service. Take advantage of this for your read as well as for yourself. They have all sorts of really cool features, one of which I think is really cool is their member-only content. They're called Squarespace Member Areas, and you can connect with your audience, and with the content you provide on it, you can generate revenue. You can also manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy platform. Another great feature of Squarespace are the email campaigns. You can grow and engage with your audience through these Squarespace email campaigns, and they allow you to create content that matches your website your logo, existing products, blog posts, so your messaging is consistent and effective. And finally, another great feature of Squarespace is that you can collect donations. You can support your cause by gathering contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Dylan J Dance to get 10% off your first purchase on a website or domain. Sir, permission to leave the station. For what purpose, Master Chief? To give the Covenant back their bomb. Yes. Yes. Just one question. What if you miss? I won't. So this is one of those scenes where it's like, just don't think about it too much, all right? Just enjoy the awesomeness. Given what we know about this spring, it's even more important that we capture the prophet of regret. Find out why he came to Earth, why he came here. So I'm assuming these halo rings are like parked in the Lagrange points, which are like parking spots. They're kind of, they're the place where the forces of say like a two body system, like uh, the gravitational forces cancel out and balance. And so you can kind of just park stuff there. And it's where the James Webb Space Telescope is. It's at one of those Lagrange points. And then when you're playing the game, you're often running around on the halo rings themselves. And there's gravity, you know, you're stuck to the surface just as you are on Earth. And I think in the game, uh, the gravity is generated from the rings spinning. And I don't really see any problems there. You could park a big halo ring at uh, a Lagrange point. You could also generate like artificial gravity by spinning the thing. That also works out. So they've got this concept in Halo called neural physics, uh, which is pretty interesting and cool, but it's all very sort of uh, very far out there. It's more like the best way to describe it is probably space magic. There's this thing called living time and the universe itself is alive. So we're not going to talk about that stuff because it's just you know, very out there and everything in current physics completely says otherwise. Obviously, I'm not saying some of the concepts in Halo aren't possible. I'm just saying we don't know enough about the universe to even start talking about some of those things. There's nothing really meaningful I can add to that. Um, you know, I love speculating about this stuff as well. But, I mean, in terms of real physics, I can't tell you guys anything. So, let's just move on to stuff we can talk about. 
So I don't play much Halo anymore, but of course I got Halo Infinite smashed through the campaign. I played a bit of the multiplayer, got a bit addicted there. I think it's all amazing. Uh, I really loved Halo Infinite, obviously Halo 5. Everyone's on the same page there. It was a bit of a letdown, the campaign, let's be honest. Uh, I enjoyed Halo 4. My favorite is probably Halo 3. I've actually met a couple of my really good friends playing Halo online. I met this US rapper from America, a wingspan. <laughs> yeah, we had some good times. And then I also met another one of my good friends playing Halo 5, uh, Sapphire. She's from New Zealand, so just across the ditch. And yeah, we're, we're still close friends. So the friends you meet online are real friends. It's always awesome meeting people online. You know, after you talk a bit of shit about each other, and then you come close. I think that's what happened with me and uh, Hey Wings fan. We were in the Halo 3 lobby and we were just talking absolute smack. Steve Vai in the soundtrack. I was like, damn, I gotta try that. And then I spent most of my teenage years trying to play the Halo theme song on guitar. I feel like our generation and future generations are gonna love retirement because I know what I'm gonna be doing all day, every day, playing Halo. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am truth. So you must be silenced. That'll do for the video, guys. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. If you have any good ideas for things I can react to, leave a comment down under. And if you have any questions about Halo, leave them down under.